Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Review. 10 Minute Review. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to Freedom. <laughs> welcome back to 10 Minute Review, so she's going to let me talk now. This is Freya, I'm Jason, and we're bringing you today's episode. Where are you going, Fuzzy? Where are you going? As always, guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We're just a small little family channel. Me, the fuzzy little one here. Say hi, Freya. And the wife, we just love to read, love to talk about books. It's what we do. We're going to keep doing it no matter what, but we would appreciate any support you may want to give us. So, uh, also, don't forget to check the links down below for, uh, for links to today's book and any other... Um, at least on the YouTube channel, because these videos are on other stuff too. Uh, links to today's book and any other links that might be me uh, applicable. So for today, I want to talk about an author that I've talked about in the past. Just want to talk about a different one of his books. Some of you guys may know he's one of my favorite authors. I'm going to talk about John Ringo and A Hymn Before Battle. A Hymn Before Battle. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I believe that A Hymn Before Battle was actually his debut novel. Um, so I've got uh, one of my copies right here. And uh, um, just, I, I don't even know what to say as far as how amazing this is, especially for if it was his, his debut novel. It was absolutely amazing because he ended up building out um, a really cool, I don't even want to say world, galaxy. And, and you know, this, this long-running plot line, storyline in a way that's got just all these these threads underneath, but a hymn before battle starts it all off. And it starts it all off in the most basic ways possible. We keep it very, very simple. Now, John Ringo is, is great at writing military science fiction because he's a former soldier. He's a, a former 82nd Airborne vet, just like I am. And he, as far as the science goes, he consults with a lot of PhDs in a lot of different areas, so he can keep the science as close to realistic as possible for being science fiction. He still has to, you know, still do stuff that we can't do, otherwise it would be fiction, it'd be science fact. Uh, so, Him Before Battle starts out with the uh, the legacy of the Aldenata series. Humanity is finally enters the galactic, greater galactic world, greater, greater galaxy, I suppose. Uh, finally is introduced to to aliens. We finally discover aliens are real because they come visit us. They come, they want to talk to us. They want to come talk to us for a few reasons. There is a, a galactic threat in a way, an invader, an invasive species in a way called the Posleen or Posleen. They look like centaurs and they basically scour planets clean and they're kind of coming, they, they kind of come in a, in a swath, in a wave, um, you know, cutting through to the galaxy and we are right in their path. So, the aliens come and contact, come to contact us, and there's basically two alien races that we come into contact with. The Darhel are the first ones, and then the Indoe we we come to get to know as well. So the Darhel they call them elves or space elves, and they have some weird genetics. They are stronger than than humans, faster, significantly stronger, by the way, faster than humans. They have pointed teeth. Um, however, should they engage in violence, they go catatonic after a very, very, very short period of time. So the Darhel can't fight. They even even uh, triggering weapons will set off this this catatonia. If they they you know hit the button that launches the missiles, then they're going to go into this this catatonic state, uh, basically, which basically is death to them. And uh, the Indo, so they need. Fighters. Well, what is one thing humanity is very, very good at? War. You know, we're very good at killing each other, so of course we're going to be very good at killing aliens. Not to mention we're getting invaded anyway. So the Darhel contact us because they want to, one, help us defend our planet, and two, they want us also to send a force out to help in the greater galaxy, help help shield and defend the Darhel planets as well. So the Darhel are also merchants and they're master merchants and in a lot of ways they're almost robber barons they the the way they keep the galactic economy everything is about debt everything is about debt it's basically economic slavery and the, and the darhel control everything control everything and they do not they, they do not have things such as mass production assembly line stuff like that because that would cut into their profits instead things are basically handmade which is where we get the indoe the indoe are craftsmen 
master craftsmen. They use uh, a type almost of, of, of magic. It's all kind of magic, kind of almost like a psionic ability to to manipulate manipulate things even at the at the atomic level. Um, you know, if you you know you have a mixture, a chemical mixture has one in a, a million chance of of the the molecules lining up a certain way to give you say carbon nanotubes. Well, you know, a master Indoe craftsman, uh, Sohan, I believe it is, can make that one in a million chance happen every single time. Now, of course, there's levels. You know, that to be a, a master, 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 they're very, very rare. But the Indoe create things, so. Humanity agrees, not realizing that they are basically going to put themselves in debt to the Darhel. Plus, they have the the uh, galactic army, basically, and humanity has to has to basically fold themselves under that. So we create these these military forces using galactic technology. Basically, we basically create Iron Man. They they, they have these high tech suits. In, in uh, they call them uh, the ACS Armored Combat uh, suits. And that's the primary defense against the posing. They basically, they, they shoot out so much firepower, they're basically just bullet fire, fire hoses because that's the way the posing, they're, they're not all that smart, so they attack in waves, so you, you have to take them out just because they attack in, in a couple million strong waves at times. And those particular forces are part of the galactic force. And then Earth, of course, has its own individual armies. They still are, for the most part, using basic Earth tech, so they fall under different command structure. And technically, technically, a, a uh, one of the galactic fleet uh, uh, officers actually stands above pretty much every Earth politician. As, as far as their orders go in war, which gets very interesting because you almost have this divided command. And then you've got Mike O'Neill, who is a science fiction fan and uh, former soldier, gets brought back into it. And he ends up kind of being the driving character. So him before battle just begins it. It's basically the Legacy of Alden Odyssey series. It really started out with, at first, you would have thought it was a trilogy, and I think he intend, intended for it to be a trilogy, and then the last book, the third book, got so big he split it into two. So it's actually a quadrilly. It's four books, but they're four fantastic books. Four absolutely fantastic books. This series is one of my favorite series ever. I've read this so many times. So if you like military science fiction, you've got to check it out. Because again, this kicks off a whole bunch of books. There's a lot more than just the first four books of this series, a lot more. Plus, it's a great introduction to John Ringo, because again, he's a fantastic author that writes all kinds of genres. After you hit the like and subscribe buttons, check it out. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.